So James, the, the term artificial intelligence is very hot right now, but it's probably intimidating for some people who don't know what it is or how it works. So how does AI apply to Symbility? Well, the way we're going to be using uh, artificial intelligence is uh, by taking all of the data that we've accumulated over the years, and we've been at this for a dozen years now, have accumulated millions of property insurance claims, and that includes every nut, bolt, and screw that went into fixing your flooded basement. We have over 100 million photographs of damaged properties. And the sophistication around these uh, algorithms associated with artificial intelligence is, is constantly improving such that image recognition for photographs, for example, or the ability to learn uh, from a replication of processes that you can then do with as little human inter interaction as possible. So in theory, if I've done a thousand flooded basements, I should be able to settle and determine within a real uh, strong degree of accuracy what yours is going to cost by virtue of asking you five questions and taking three photographs. So your company breaks down into three segments, property, uh, health, and strategic. So how are they different and how are they the same? The property division is our primary uh, platform. It's a platform that includes a cloud-based communication hub that involves all of the constituents that would be involved in getting you back to whole as a, as a, a loss uh, from that flooded basement. Our uh, health platform is for employee benefits. Similar concept, cloud-based communication hub that's connecting all of the different pieces that is your employee benefit package. And then our services division, we call Symbility Intersect, is focused on providing uh, these types of application development services to our customers. I think the insurance industry, who largely is our core uh, primary customer base, they're still pushing their way toward uh, creating tools that allow them to better interact with their policyholders, and that's what we want to lend a hand on. So a lot of companies are in the AI sector, a lot of them are pushing into it even in, in your sector, of course. So how do you differentiate from your competition? Well, we're not trying to differentiate um, by virtue of building out these models today. We're working with companies that are already in the business. And here in Toronto, there's a wealth of uh, new companies that have been trained at the heels of the, the experts at the University of Toronto within the Vector Institute and so forth. And working with those companies that have built those models while concurrently bringing in our own resources that we can ultimately pull that back in-house, we're taking a, a more gradual approach, but leveraging the companies that have already done it. The differentiation yeah, okay. for us is the fact that we have the data. Again, uh, about a billion pieces of data having accumulated claims in eight countries around the world with 60,000 users pushing millions of claims through the process. All having been on a cloud-based environment, so all running over our servers, and our license to that data allows us to learn from it to better the products. Would you say that pretty well all of your customers are very accepting about what you're doing, or are some a little resistant? And they're, and they're still maybe a bit old-fashioned. No, I think they are all, they're yeah. all old-fashioned, yeah. uh, no question about it. But they're all as curious as the next, uh, trying to find a way to make their businesses more efficient. And uh, if they think uh, we can find the answer through the data that we've accumulated, and not just specifically the data from their company, but an amalgam of uh, eight different countries can, can yield a lot of different information. Let's talk financials, James. Uh, what kind of revenue growth are we looking at? Uh, are you looking at profitability Q4 of this year? I saw that in one analyst report. We uh, gave guidance uh, on this year to do between 40 and 42 million of revenue, uh, which is roughly 20% growth. That's been our, our growth path for the last few years uh, with an adjusted EBITDA of two to three million. And your profit margins are, are steadily around the high 60s, 70%. Is that, how do you do that and is it uh, sustainable? It is sustainable, and uh, we're trying to constantly improve that. Um, you know, your, your services business is a lower margin business, but it's a, it's a great uh, service to offer to our customers to help them to build confidence in our ability to build uh, software if they needed changes to our platform. Uh, but the platform play is where you get the highest gross margin, uh, upwards of 80 and into the 90s. So in 2013, I guess it was CoreLogic out of the U.S. took about a 28% stake in Symbility. And I saw some stories back then that said, 
well, they're probably going to take them out at some point. Here we are nearly four years later. So are they strictly a partner or is there, I guess there's always a possibility of they may finally knock on your door and say, hey, we want to we want to buy you. What do you think? It's always a possibility. Yeah. Uh, and uh, But they are a very strong partner of ours. Not only are they a 28% shareholder, they are our business partner in the United States, Canada. Uh, they provide the labor material prices. CoreLogic is a $4 billion market cap company out of Irvine, California that's focused entirely on property information. So they have information on every parcel of land in America, for example, every MLS listing, photograph, you name it. Being able to source the data from them into our uh, models and into our applications is uh, giving us a real advantage over other companies in these markets. Then in Australia and New Zealand, they have a very robust uh, um, Salesforce, so they act as our sales and marketing team in those markets as well. So we have a, a very comprehensive uh, relationship. They have uh, seats on the board, a strong share ownership, and we're just working toward constantly improving the business and, and uh, benefiting each other. As far as investors are concerned, current shareholders, potential shareholders, what do you say to them? What's, what's your message to them to convince them that the Symbility is a, a strong investment? If you looked at all the technology companies in the market, there's a handful of the unicorns that are growing at 40, 50 and, and greater percentages. There's not that many beyond those who are growing at a steady 20% rate. So we have steady growth. Uh, we have a very sticky product. We have, as I said, 60,000 users around the world pushing claims over a very robust communication hub, one code base, uh, fully ISO certified in uh, seven countries around the world right now. Um, it's, it, once you've built and amassed that much, it's very hard for it to go sideways, uh, is what I would say. So not only do we have the natural growth, but now that we're tapping into all of that data we've accumulated and the, the, the wealth of information that can be uh, funneled into these models uh, from an artificial intelligence machine learning perspective, that opens up a whole new set of doors because our goal is to take a set of tools that we built for experts, adjusters, insurance specialists, contractors, and put them in the hands of you and I, the policyholder such that I can answer a few questions, take a couple of photos, maybe a video, and the outcomes are in my hands, the money's in my account. That's the, the nirvana, which in the insurance world today, it's still a lot of checks being sent around, weeks go by, uh, a lot of phone calls, uh, so that's what we wanna change. 